Chapter 14, The Service Person. She had left her business card, Elsa von Enberg, President, Commerce Bank Hamburg, Germany, with the Senate stationery. In beautiful handwriting, she thanked him for inviting her to the wonderful party. She then went on to mention that she found him both attractive and interesting. She closed with the option of hopefully getting together again at some other time. This was not the type of offer that a smart man takes a pass on. Let's see what's really going on here. Bobby called the number on the engraved business card. He was more than a little surprised when, after giving his name, the receptionist mentioned that she had been expecting his call. This was definitely a beautiful and very spoiled woman who was used to getting what she wanted all the time. That would have to change soon, but was she ready for that? Mr. O'Shaughnessy, so nice of you to call. I see that I got your attention. Yes, you did very much. That picture is one of my favorites. Of course, that was a few years and a few kilos ago. I am long past my modeling days, as you would say in America. They look like some very nice kilos to me, Bobby told her. I'm busy all day with meetings and appointments. I am available this evening if you would like to perhaps get together. I think that could be arranged. Let me check my schedule and I'll get back to you. Bobby arrived 15 minutes late just to show her that she was not in charge and that he was not desperate. She answered wearing the expected outfit for seduction. What was not expected was just how hot she would look in the industry standard lingerie and fuck me pumps. Good God she could wear it well. After all, she was a professional. Her lingerie flowed with her every move. This was not from Fredericks. This might even be a cut above Victoria's Secret. Somehow at that moment, it did not matter. He wondered if she was a lingerie or a fashion model back in the day. Her walk was definitely runway trained. She was already taller than Bob without the three inch heels she wore for the occasion. Greeting him with a hug that let him feel her high beams and not too chaste kiss with wonderfully soft lips, she invited him in. Bob was surprised to say the least. Her house was tastefully decorated with what looked like some museum quality pieces. Her taste was impressive, another facet of her personality that he was just learning about. Breaking the kiss, she asked him if he would like a drink, gesturing to the full bar and an ornate looking sideboard that had to be well over 100 years old. Whiskey if you have it, beer if you don't, he told her. You're not a glass of fine wine type of man, I see. What kind of man are you, my very sexy, dangerous and mysterious friend? You've been here only a few months and already you are famous and well connected. How is that? I can't really say. Sometimes things just happen. I'm a stranger in a strange land, he said laughing, trying to get by and make a few friends. I can see how you make friends quickly. You are also a reserve constable and a personal assistant. That is quite a combination, if I may say so. How exactly does that happen, if I may ask? Well, first of all, I'm an honorary constable. It is an empty position. I was put in some situations where I had to do something or someone would have been hurt. I couldn't allow that to happen, so I did what I thought was necessary under the circumstances. The people I assisted were associated with other people, and here I am. You know how that works around here. We call it networking. You make it sound so simple, is it? I don't know about that, but I know life is tough enough without making things more difficult than necessary. I like to keep it simple, silly. Kiss. So you are not a difficult person, she said as she very deftly and skillfully slid into his arms. Not unless it suits my purposes, Bobby replied, while alternating between sucking on his drink and a very sensitive spot on her neck. This had the desired effect, and she responded as expected. Not falling into the trap of letting her decide the where, when, and how this seduction was going to happen, Bob took his time with his drink and this beautiful and thoroughly aroused woman. Would you like to see the rest of my house? She asked with her nipples trying to burst through the flimsy garment she was still wearing for the moment. Will it take long? Because I think you need a good humping soon. Well, we could skip the long tour and go straight to my bedroom. Unless, of course, you would like to see my kitchen, she laughed. If you let me finish this drink and make me another, I think we can try and find out what makes you whimper and beg. Would you prefer another drink? Or would you rather just have me first? She was smiling the smile of a woman who knew just how hot she looked. What man could resist? Bobby could and did for the moment. Every man has his personal turn-ons, and some men are more easily aroused than others. For many, just seeing a beautiful woman is enough to get their imagination and their hormones raging. 
to a man who has had hundreds of beautiful and passionate women, Bobby could afford to be a little more selective. Since his threshold was a little higher, Bob didn't get all worked up just because a sexy woman was making herself available. Not to mention, he was determined to get the upper hand in this arrangement. Why make this an arrangement rather than a relationship? Because a relationship is open to constant reinterpretation and an arrangement is more of a negotiated deal between consenting adults. It has much less wiggle room. Many a good fuck buddy has been lost due to a misunderstanding. This was all it was going to be. If you're holding out for more or waiting for more, that just wasn't going to happen. So don't bother waiting for it. Bobby stuck the tip of his finger in her mouth and she sucked on it greedily. Then he started massaging her nipple with his moist finger to see if it could get any bigger or harder, both of which happened. Then he popped the now puckering and sensitive bud in his mouth, making her moan softly. Knowing that this nice girl was expecting some bad boy sex, Bobby pumped up his aggressive and dominant side. He was sexually a meat and potatoes kind of guy. Being a little dominant and controlling was not out of the realm of what he liked to do, but anything more than spanking and a little mild bondage was beyond his personal limits. In this instance, bad boy sex meant a little manhandling and back of the neck biting, as well as some nasty pillow tuck and espanol. The bottom line was how good he could pound her very sweet and incredibly tight body. She was looking for a man who could make her do bad things and like it. Not a man who was grateful just to get a little. That would never work. He was going to get her best effort or she would have to deal with the consequences. If she had any idea of what those consequences might be, she would probably volunteer for more. After a pounding, the intensity of which she could not remember, Elsie collapsed into a shuddering, sweaty mess. Coming up for air and a cold drink, she gave up all pretense of being in control. If he wanted this woman to be happy with this situation, she would have to feel that she maintained a unique social position. Finding a good service person was always difficult. Women of that temperament and intensity were tough to find. This one, she had drive and ambition, as well as her personal and professional pride. She wouldn't be where she was if she was inclined to follow her man's lead. Maybe that's why she didn't have a man, as Bobby soon found out. He would have to stay on his toes, and there would be no half-stepping with this woman. Keeping her in pocket was going to be a challenge that he was looking forward to. After a fresh cocktail, Bobby let his new friend take charge and show him what she could do to reciprocate for the incredible orgasm she had earlier. Being the smart and versatile man that he was, Lying back passively and letting her take charge was a treat and well worth his earlier efforts. She was incredibly skilled and motivated to please him as long as he would allow her to. It was close to dawn when the last round of Who Can Service Who Better was finally over for the night. It had to be called a draw at this point. They both agreed to pick up where they left off at a later date. Bobby had to peel her arms off so he could get away. Elsie had to leave him with something interesting to think about. Mr. Bobby, as a man of the world, I'm sure you have thought about, if not experienced, being with two incredibly sexy women at the same time. Yes, I will admit that thought has crossed my mind on occasion, he laughed at the silly question. I would like to introduce you to my friend Carmen Maria. She's very submissive. Would that interest you, my very naughty friend? You have my attention. Let me know when you'd like to do that, he said. Oh no, you're not getting away that easy. You don't have to wait for me to do something. You can come by and do nasty things to me anytime you want. You can even do me at work as long as I'm not in a meeting, she laughed. Our closet freak ex-model was not prepared when a week later she got a call about 11 a.m. asking her if she had plans for lunch. When she said that she could cancel, Bob mentioned that he would be up to her office at about 12.15 thinking there would be some delicious romance. She was already wet when he got there. Bending her over the ornate and way too expensive desk, Bobby took charge. While he was nuzzling her graceful neck and grinding into her incredibly tight ass, she asked playfully, What about lunch, Liebchen? Being prepared like a good boy scout, Bob shoved a Snickers bar in front of her on the desk. Her laughter was so loud that the other people in the office had to have heard. She didn't know that she had a real-life bad boy of her very own to play with. 
but never Ohm. She knew it now. Pulling her off the desk, Bobby squatted down and pulled her panties to the ankles. Standing up, he used his foot to push him to the floor, where she gracefully stepped out of them before he threw her back on the desk for a vicious screwing. Sex with Bob was so intense that she had to cry after he left. What is it about this man that just makes me want to turn in to the biggest slut that ever walked the face of the earth? Even worse, not caring who knows it, she thought.